Hello, welcome to Guitar Solo Dojo. We're going to cover one of my all-time favorite Van Halen songs. I guess they're kind of all my all-time favorite Van Halen songs, but this one's one of the all-time favorite of the all-time favorites. Anyway, we're just going to talk about the solo uh, and the intro to the solo especially, because that's one that gives everybody fits. And it's all about timing of that volume knob and making sure that you have a volume knob that easily spins. If you've got a heavy one, you're going to have a very difficult time with this little section. So I'll play really slowly. I'm assuming you can find tablature for this somewhere. If you can't, go find tablature for, from this somewhere. But the real trick is how you use that volume knob in the intro. So we get this riff. Right there. Right after you hit those opens, the volume's got to come all the way down. <coughs> you hit it slightly ahead of time. Back up again. I'm doing it right now is exactly how you should do it just over and over and over again just to get that to where it's automated because if you ever hope to pull this off live in any kind of band or anything that you're doing you definitely have to have that part on autopilot so right after that we get this cool little tremolo picking so the key with the tremolo picking and Eddie does it a lot is not thinking in terms of how many times can I pick the note it's when do I change to the next note because some people are going to pick it faster, some people are going to pick it slower, and it doesn't really matter. The idea is just timing the changes. That's the most important part. So if you're really not as fast on the tremolo picking, it might be it might just amount to sixteenth notes. Or if you're faster, either way, just time the changes more than anything else, and then. The next little section of the solo starts with the pickup note, which is basically on four before the solo really gets into full swing. So it's one, two, three, right? And then we get this next part, which isn't so big, but then this really cool thing, we've talked about symmetrical patterns that Eddie uses, and this one is another example of it where he's taking this B minor pentatonic, and he's dropping from the fifth down a half step. So that's essentially the pattern. But he's going. So play really slowly. And these first three notes start on the E of the beat. So two, three, four, and. Uh, e, e and, a, sorry. So two, three, E and. A, and I don't know what beat it's on, actually. I'd have to think about that. But. So you want to feel the downbeat and then start that fill. And here we get two sixteenth notes and then basically four thirty second notes. So this has to fit in one beat. And then we get that sixteenth note run. So, so far. And we start back in that B blues thing. And that takes that bin lasts basically until two of the measure that this riff is on, and it's another symmetrical pattern. You hear lots of little noise and you'll see lots of little things in the transcription where it's a very literal transcription most of the time when you see this. So every little noise that happens, whether it's a squeaky chair, it's gonna be added in there. So ignore some of that stuff and try to cut through the fat and then actually just see what's really going on. So, so it carries that out through that measure and then it hits it one more time. And then, next really cool riff. Timing of that one is super, super important. It starts on the upbeat of one. And then this next run. There's a few ways I've seen it. You could right there. I use it as harmonics. I think it sounds pretty cool. I slide up to the 12th fret. How he actually did it, I'm not sure. I don't think he would mind if we altered it just a little bit. Anyway, and then we get to this part. 
pattern, which basically looks like an A-shaped chord, and he adds in a little sus, two, sus two. This is also important, this. That little string of harmonics, if you don't time it right, it'll throw everything off, so that has to come in on four, so. So that's the end of that, and then we finish that off, and back to this. Back to the main riff. Eventually he goes into this part, which is that cool little harmonic thing, which I'm not sure exactly how he did it, but I think it's something like this, where he just does this. He does that with the left hand on the G string. He just uses his right hand to create the harmonic sound. So. Right back into the song. So, enjoy. Have fun.